Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and in this video, I want to show you guys a little bit about how we draft a cover sheet on a record of survey map. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, not gonna get into a lot of detail about what exactly a record of survey map is. the The short answer to that question is it's a official copy of a survey that a land surveyor performs. They're usually boundary surveys, but they can also be control surveys. And so what I'm going to show you today is how to how to draft a cover sheet for a record of survey map. So I have our template pulled up here. I'm going to teach you about uh, the basic layout of this cover sheet, and then I'll talk to you about uh, these standard statements and some of the rules that you have to follow when you're doing record of survey maps. Um, there's some rules defined by state law here in California about what has to go on here, some of the formatting. And then um, we'll go through some of these statements, and I'll explain how these get how these get filled out. And I'm not sure if we'll be able to fit this in one video or if it'll be more than one video. But um, anyways, I'm going to teach you how to do that. And uh, let me just say here at the beginning of the video that uh, this is going to, this the rules I'm going to talk about here are specific to California. They could be different uh, depending on the state that you're in. So for example, my home state of Montana, these are called certificates of survey, not record of surveys. And different states will have different rules. So I'll... Uh, I hope most of this information will be applicable in uh, in a lot of different places where CAD techs are working, but there may be some things specific to California in here, so make sure you check your local uh, local laws, state laws, and um, sometimes even the county or city that you're in may have some things they want to see on your record of survey map. So, anyways, uh, this uh, this is for California. So, and I'm making this video for my CAD tech, uh, Austin. Is that CAD Ninja in training? And uh, I don't know, my old, my former CAD Ninja, Elena, might benefit from some of this too. I'm not sure, but I'll make sure I send her a link to the video. Okay, so let's start, guys, by just talking about what we're looking at here. So this is the cover sheet of a record of survey. And typically, my record of survey maps are always uh, more than one sheet. So I typically always have a cover sheet and at least one map sheet, although there could be more, uh, could be more than one map sheet. A lot of surveyors will, will try and fit everything on one sheet. Sometimes you can do that. I don't usually do that. I find that by the time I get all the statements on here and a decent uh, little vicinity map and some other information here, sheet index, that I usually have at least one more sheet. So on the survey that Austin's working on now for a project we've got, Martina, Martinez, we're actually going to have this cover sheet, and then I think we have three map sheets that that follow that. All right, so let's just go over the basic layout. So the first thing I'll teach you is... Uh, my record of survey always fits on a, a layout grid, a 2-inch by 2-inch layout grid, which you can see here. Uh, so I try and keep my different statements inside these uh, cells, these 2 by 2 inch cells. And these red lines are the center line of the layout grid, and then the, there's a tenth of an inch buffer. And that just helps keep the map structured, makes it easier to read, and it also allows me to move things around if I need to on this grid. Okay, but for what we're doing today, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, freeze those grid layers. Okay. I just wanted to show you that everything fits on the grid. So this is my standard record of survey cover sheet layout. And um, so what, what we have here is I have uh, in the upper left-hand kind of uh, portion of the map, this is the map view. And it takes up, obviously, it takes up the majority of the map. And, and we'll fit in a little vicinity map here. Uh, but basically, this is where the, the main portion of the map is going to go. And it's going to kind of be a, a like an overview map uh, that's going to show the the basic footprint of what we're mapping and, and uh, the sh probably where the map sheets are, footprint of the map sheets. And then usually we have some control ties. I almost always do stuff on state planes, so we'll tie out some cores or PBOs here. I'm going to try not to move my cursor all around because it drives my nephew Julian crazy. Um. So that's that's what takes up the bulk of the map, and depending on how things go, you know, we might even uh, we might even pull over. We might even pull this viewport over another two two cells, and put the Vic map here, and we might have some other notes. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and leave this the way I have it. So there's the main the main view, the map, and of course that content changes per project. So I'm not going over it in this video. Uh, but I will try and do a video that shows how, how we draft the content that goes in this map view on the cover sheet. 
Okay, then I have what I call my two bars. So I have the vertical bar here on the right, and I have the horizontal bar here at the bottom. Uh, and that's just my preference. Uh, there's no reason why you couldn't put the vertical bar on the left and the horizontal bar at the top, but that's this is how I lay out most of my maps. So I've got a list of map notes here on the right in the vertical bar, and I have another list in the uh, in the horizontal bar on the bottom. So let's go ahead and go through these uh, bars real quick. We'll start with the uh, with the vertical bar. So at the top, I have the uh, what I call the title blob. So everything that fits in a set of cells, I call a blob. So this is the title blob. Just as record of survey number, and then most counties I work in will give this a number. Uh, could be four digits, could be more than four digits. Um, and this is just a, I, don't, I really don't like this. I'm going to change this. I like to use the number sign. And then right down here we have a, a, a statement uh, that I call the lands of statement. So typically when we're doing a record survey, we're, we're surveying somebody's specific property. Uh, so we're going to say, say what we're saying here and uh, what county it's in and then the date of the survey. Um, and this is actually out of date, um, so we'll, we're going to go ahead and update this. I'm going to show you how to do that. And this is the only text that's center justified on the whole map is, is up here, and it's because it's the title blob. So let's go ahead and update this for a survey that I'm working on right now. And I'm working on a survey out in Farmington, east of Stockton. So we're going to go, uh, we need to figure out uh, what deed our property is described in. So let's go open that job. And I'm going to go into research, deeds, vesting deed. Looks like I broke my explorer. I don't know why that's happening. We can also steal what we need off of this, uh, this map here. It should be on this record survey. So let's do that. So I've got I've got an older record of survey here. I'm gonna open it in my other PDF viewer so you guys can see it. All right, so this is an old record of survey. Now the important information here is we want to know. I know I'm in section 11, but uh, we want to know that we're in Township 1 North, Range 9 East, Mount Diablo, Baseline, and Meridian. So let's go ahead and update this note. So we're going to say, I'm going to say being a survey of, and then I'm going to say the access easement, because that's what we surveyed. We didn't survey a parcel. Described in, I'm going to say, doc xx. Okay, so I'm gonna I'll put in the deed reference there for our vesting deed that describes this easement. And then I'm gonna say, being located within section 11, township one north, range nine east, Mount Diablo. Baseline and Meridian, San Joaquin County, California. Okay, and then I'm going to put in here the date of my survey was actually, uh, I'm going to put March 2020. Okay, so I need to add the deed reference here. So let's uh, let's see if we can get that to open up. Here it is. All right, let me open this where you guys can see it. All right. So you want to make sure you don't mess this up. You want to get this instrument number correct. So this is the instrument that uh, this is our vesting grant deed. So let's pull this up and we'll finish this title statement. So it's actually not a doc. It's in an instrument number. So I'm going to say an instrument number. nine one zero four four zero nine eight okay so that's the deed you'll notice here this text is actually too close to this line 
So let's turn on our layout grid and we'll fix that. This text shouldn't go past the buffer line. That's what it's for. There, it looks a little better. And uh, I don't want to split Sam Joaquin right there, so I'm going to just hit enter and drop that down. Okay. That's basically it, guys. Oh, let's fix this. This is in the wrong spot, too. All right. So uh, our title statement's done. We'll get this number from the county surveyor. He'll give that to us. Okay, so the next thing we have is the surveyor statement. So this is actually my statement. Uh, it says this map correctly represents a survey made by me under my direction in conformance with the requirements of the Professional Land Surveyors Act. And then and we want to update this date. So this is March of 2020. Okay. And we want to put my LS number in here, 8489. And then we'll fill in this when I actually sign the map. And that's it for the surveyor statement blob. Okay, then we have the county surveyor statement, so he's going to fill this out. We know the date's going to be 2020. Okay, and what you really need to do for this is you is you need to reach out to the county surveyor and make sure you get the last filed map so you have the current statements. Um, but I know for sure that this is going to be uh, James Hart. And I don't know if he's the deputy or the actual. I think he's the actual county surveyor. Uh, he might be a deputy. I can't remember. I'm going to leave that for now. And I don't know what his LS number is, so... Uh, we will find that out and get that filled in. I'm going to actually let my tech do that. I'm going to just make this cons consistent. And since I'm licensed in more than one state, I'm going to go ahead and put California in there. Okay, then we have the recorder statement. So <clears throat> uh, the maps we usually, they don't always get filed. Uh, they don't always get recorded. depends on your county, but they do get filed. So this is going to say filed this day of blank 2020. Okay, at blah, blah, blah in book of maps. Now this may change depending on the county. So in San Joaquin, San Joaquin County, I know this is going to be a record of surveys. Okay, at page blank at the request of. Okay, and this isn't BKF Engineers. This is RH Surveying Inc. Okay, and then they may give it a file number and a fee. Okay, and then we're going to have to put in the name of the recorder, and it may be a deputy, but for now I'm going to leave that. So we'll get this information from the county as well. Okay, so that's the recorder statement. Again, this is very important. This will change by the county. The name of the volume that you're filed in and the name of the county recorder will obviously change depending on the county. Okay, so here we have our basis of bearing statement. Uh, you need to get this from your land surveyor. And I'm probably going to skip that in this video because I'm running a little behind. But, um, you know, my, my because I'm usually on state plane tied to cores, my statements don't change very much. So I'm going to say the basis of bearing for this survey is the grid bearing of, and I'm going to have something in here, X, 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 X. Okay, and then I'm going to put in the name of my cores. Okay, so we'll come in and update that. Okay, and then I always like to put a purpose statement on here. It just kind of helps the map viewer, the map reader. So I'm going to say uh, the purpose this survey is to, uh, the purpose of uh, the survey was to establish the west line of section 11 and the 20 foot wide access easement running parallel to the section line. Okay, and then I'm gonna say, you're supposed to tell people if you if you hit a trigger why you're filing your map, and so I did hit a trigger, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in here. And again, your LS is usually gonna give you, give you this. I'm gonna say this map being filed to comply the requirements of section XXXX of the California Business and Professions Code, Land Surveyors Act, which requires the filing of a, hey, I'm gonna break this up, I'm gonna say this section, a land surveyor to file a map if he establishes position of public land survey system section corners 
Okay, and then we're just going to say this survey established the north, west, and south west corners of section 11. I'm going to say established and monumented. Okay, so that just explains what we're doing. And again, your, your land saver, surveyor should give you this. This is the cover sheet. I think we're going to get all this on two sheets. So I'm going to just say cover sheet, sheet one of two. Okay, my legend isn't going to change. That's pretty typical. Uh, my line types typically won't change. This is out in the in the boonies, so I know I'm not going to have a curb line. So I'm actually going to edit this. We're going to say uh, PLSS section line. And uh, I'm going to assign a different different line type to that. And I've obviously deleted my subject parcel line, which is not good. So uh, let's see if we have this in here. Yeah. So this, this may need a little bit of cleanup, but units, I'm in ground. Units are U.S. survey feet, angles and bearings are degrees, minutes, seconds. Okay, references. I'm not going to have a lot of references here. I always try and have the grant deed as reference number one, and we already know what that is. So I'm probably only going to have three references here. So we're going to have the grant deed. The vesting grant deed is our first reference. I try and make that consistent. Okay, then uh, R2 is going to be this old record of survey that wasn't a huge help, but was a little bit of help. We looked for some monuments that were on there. So that's uh, RS09165. Uh, and then we're going to actually reference the GLO Township Plat and Field Notes. Okay, and then I like to do a, a little uh, footnote here that just says all references are San Keene County records unless noted otherwise. Okay, and then so since we said that, we need to note that this is not a San Joaquin County record. So I'm going to say on file with the California BLM Survey Records Unit. Okay, and again, your surveyor will give you these references. We have our north arrow and our scale, and I already know 1 to 40 is not going to cut it on this. Uh, so this needs to get updated. We're probably going to be, uh, I'm going to bet we're at 1 to 200 probably on our overview map. I think these are a half an inch now. So I have something that looks like that. All right, and then this doesn't change. This is our logo and the address. So a couple quick things. Um, I really need a black and white logo because these maps are done in black and white. And uh, your text should be at least a tenth of an inch high. That's required in California. And you also need at least a one inch margin. That's required in California. I actually have a two inch margin. So I could put some other information outside the margin here. And I, we probably will do that. I'll probably add the, the job number and the file path over here. In fact, we can do that right now. Let's just do it. Uh, we'll copy this text over. And uh, we're just going to put in the job number. Okay. And then uh, we'll copy this again. Yeah, that's probably all I need. So uh, let's rotate this. And then uh, we're just going to do a little offset here. I'm going to do a tenth of an inch offset. And we can just put that right there. So there's our job number reference. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save this now. Um, so again, you know, we need some more information here. Uh, we need to get the county surveyor statement and the recorder statement. We need to figure out what cores we tied for our basis of bearing and what that value is. Uh, but other than that, this is just about done. Um, we've also got to make sure we clean up these line types. So um, I'll, I'll try and do another video, guys, and, and I'll show you what we put in this uh, map view. But uh, that gives you a good overview of the statements and kind of the basic layout of the sheet. All right, that was about double the length I normally need to go. So I appreciate you guys being patient, and thanks for watching the video. Austin, I hope this helps you out, man. All right.